On the morning of Friday, December 20th, 2019, in Port Clinton, Ohio, 14-year-old Harley Dilly left his house at 6.08 a.m. for the last time. Earlier that morning, Harley told his mother, Heather Dilly, that he was not feeling well and asked if he could stay home. His mother, Heather Dilly, did not believe Harley and told him to go to school anyways. So when he left the house that morning, it was believed by his family he was going to go to school. What his mother didn't know was that was the last time she would ever see him alive. As Friday became sadder, Harley's family became more and more worried. Heather and her son oftentimes got into arguments, and sometimes Harley would leave and spend the night at a friend's house, but this was the longest he had ever been missing. As his mother later stated in an interview with Ohio BCI, leaving like this is not in his son's nature, later clarifying how particular Harley can be about things. She later talked about how he would only eat sandwiches that were cut in certain ways or would only eat fish and chicken patties that were cooked in a certain manner. At this time, Harley Dilly's father, Marcus Dilly, stepped in just before midnight on Saturday, December 21st, 2019, and reported Harley Dilly missing. The police issued a be on the lookout order for Harley Dilly at 2.30 a.m. The next day, Heather Dilly posted on Facebook that her son is missing and contact her, her husband, or Port Clinton police if Harley was seen which was later shared by the Port Clinton Police. The post ends up having a large enough effect to form the first and last community search party at 10 a.m. However, this did not yield any results. It actually had quite the opposite effect. Throughout the day, Facebook posts claiming Harley has been found, as well as false leads coming into the police station end up hurting the investigation. And Rob Hickman of the Port Clinton Police confirms that Harley was not found and to stop posting that he was, unless we the police have actually notified you. Later that day at 523, Hickman thanks the community for the help but requests that any future searches be conducted by the police. This puts a stop to any future community searches. On the 24th of December, the police upgrade Harley's missing alerts to an endangered missing child advisory. And they for the first time released surveillance video of the last time anyone saw Harley alive. He was last seen leaving the school between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. but never made it. Because this means something happened to Harley between 6 to 7 a.m. December 20th between his house and the school. In light of this, an organization, Bikers Against Abused and Neglected Children, donated $2,000 to help fund the search for Harley. Christmas Day, there was still no sign of Harley. So the police organized a search of 150 acres of land using around a dozen canine teams, multiple drones, and two helicopters to no effect. Chief Hickman made a statement saying that an Amber Alert is not being issued because the disappearance does not meet the criteria and there is no evidence Harley was abducted. He for the first time admits in the interview that the police were called to the Dilly residence about a month earlier due to an argument between Dilly and his parents but did not give any specific details. It was also discovered that Dilly had several YouTube videos claiming abuse. It is unsure if these allegations could be trusted considering Harley Dilly suffered from anger issues, oppositional defiant disorder, Asperger's, as well as ADHD. But these allegations coupled with the fact the mother did not report him missing for the first 40 hours caused some residents of Port Clinton to believe Harley was murdered. This was refuted by the chief of police and did not have any strong evidence to support it, but a small town and online rumors can spread quickly. Around this time, false claims and sightings filled the phone line support Clinton Police Department, including one person claiming to have spoken with Harley Dilly in Indiana, saying Harley Dilly was fine. Once the police department drove and interviewed the witness, he admitted to making the whole story up. This caused the police department to stop doing press calls. On December 27th, the FBI as well as the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children got involved and expanded the search nationwide, distributing missing children posters all across the U.S., going door-to-door -door, handing out flyers and requesting residential security footage. In light of this, the mother finally makes her first TV appearance, as well as a post that is now deleted saying, I guess it's time I get on TV and talk. People say I'm a horrible mother for not speaking and showing emotion as much as my parents, but they don't know I needed to be medicated because they were afraid what would happen to me and I don't want to die again, which makes public opinion worse. The family and neighborhood gathered to perform a candlelight vigil in support of Harley the next day, where his grandfather said it can happen to anybody's child, and appears to be more emotionally distraught than the immediate family, which does not help the opinion of the mother and father to the town folk. At this point, the case has gained national attention. His case was featured on Live PD in hopes of bringing Harley home. On the 13th, police officers saw the house across the street the Harley's residence had a lockbox. The police thought it may be for sale and to give it a shot. 
They ended up getting a hold of the elderly couple who owned the house who used it as a vacation. They were more than happy to help the investigation, but the keys were not at the residence. So the police department sent two officers to Avon, Ohio to pick up the keys. When the policemen entered, they saw the marine puffer jacket and glasses. That's when a marshal, two officers, and an FBI re-entered the home. Officers said there was no smell while entering the home, but the bricks and stone chimney were removed and a strong odor was present when they found Harley Dilly's body. Harley Dilly was stuck in the chimney 23 days before being found and was believed to have died before the investigation even started. The family was notified around 3.30 to 4.30, January 14th of their son's death. It's believed that early December 20th, Harley faked being sick to avoid school. His mother did not believe him and forced him to go to school anyways. Where on his way to school, he was spotted by security cameras, proving he was alive and walking of his own volition the morning of the 20th. It was believed on his way, he saw a vacant house, tried to enter the house via the chimney to ditch school, where he got stuck and died from compressive asphyxia. The flute pipe was 9 by 13 and the bottom of the fireplace was bricked up, making it impossible for Harley to escape. It was deemed impossible that Harley was put into the chimney by the top based on his position, and the bricks at the bottom prevented him from being stopped up the chimney. The bricks and joints at the bottom were tested to see if they were re-bricked after being stuffed, and it was confirmed that there was the original mortar, making this impossible for anything except a tragic accident. The mother as well as the police chief are still getting threats and harassments to this day. It's gotten so bad that the Dilly residents had to put up a privacy fence to stop people from driving to their house and harassing them. A petition was opened to create the Harley Low, requiring parents to report missing children in light of the Harley incident in a timely manner. This has been the tragic story of Harley Dilly. Until next time, this is Into the Fire.